Al-Qaeda leader Aman al-Zawahiri was one of America's most wanted terrorists. He helped orchestrate the September 11th terror attacks. And CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge has more on the U.S. drone strike that killed al-Zawahiri in Afghanistan. Smoke rose after two Hellfire missiles used by the U.S. military for targeted assassinations rained down on Ayman al-Zawahiri. After the drone strike, green tarps hung from a building where it's believed he spent his final moments before he was killed on a balcony. Americans can feel safer today now that the leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, is off the battlefield. Even with a $25 million bounty on his head, the al-Qaeda leader's whereabouts was a lingering mystery for U.S. intelligence. Earlier this year, the terrorist leader was tracked down to the busy Afghan capital of Kabul, where he reunited with family. After an intelligence briefing where the president saw a model of the terrorist safe house, he authorized the strike. This mission was carefully planned, rigorously minimized the risk of harm to other civilians. The fact al-Zawahiri was in Kabul underscores the close relationship between al-Qaeda and senior Taliban leadership and a violation of the Taliban's commitment not to harbor terrorists. We are communicating directly with the Taliban about their obligations not to allow al-Qaeda uh, to use Afghanistan as a basis for plotting. Al-Zawahiri played a key role in the 9-11 attacks and plots that murdered Americans overseas at two U.S. embassies in East Africa and on the USS Cole in Yemen. After Navy SEALs raided this compound in Pakistan, killing al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden, al-Zawahiri took over. After last year's chaotic withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, Mr. Biden insisted the weekend strike shows the U.S. ability to target terrorists remains strong. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. An Egyptian Saif al Adel, described as the terror network's military leader, is the likely successor. A former senior U.S. military official tells CBS News that while the leadership has changed, al Qaeda remains a resilient adversary that seeks out safe havens. Lana? Catherine, thank you. For more now, I want to bring in former U.S. Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. Secretary Hagel, thank you for being here. This is significant in part because it's the first time that the U.S. launched a strike inside Afghanistan since the last American troops withdraw from the country almost a year ago. What does this tell you about US's, the U.S.'s capabilities to monitor and address terrorist threats without having an actual presence there in the country? Well, I think it... Uh reflects on what the president said in Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense last year about our capability to address over-the-horizon threats. Um, and this is a perfect example. You, you don't need troops on the ground uh, occupying a country to have that capability. We have tremendous capabilities uh, that put us, project our capabilities and force structure around the world. That's because we have allies, because we have sophisticated equipment, more sophisticated than any country on earth. It's, it's a lot of different things that add up to this capability that we have. And I think what we saw here with taking out the Zawahari uh, person is, is just uh, further proof of that. What do you make of al-Zawahiri being in Afghanistan? Obviously, U.S. officials say that that violated the agreement reached with the Taliban when U.S. forces left. Under that deal, the Taliban said that it wouldn't allow Afghanistan to be used by terrorists. Does this raise specific concerns for you? Do you think that there was uh, a... Do you think that the Taliban violated that agreement? <laughs> well, they did violate that agreement, but I'm, I'm not uh, surprised, and I suspect the president and uh, all of our national security people are not surprised. Um, I mean, the Taliban uh, thrive on relationships like with al-Qaeda. Um, ISIS is a little different story. But um, no, I'm not surprised at all, and I think we're going to continue to see that relationship, uh, if not grow stronger, but certainly be present. I want to get your take on the role of al-Qaeda uh, in in society now. Obviously, after Osama bin Laden was taken out by U.S. troops, uh, the influence of al-Qaeda uh, diminished significantly. Now al-Zahiri has been, has been removed. How big of a threat does al-Qaeda still pose? Well, I think it still poses a, a significant threat to the United States, our allies. 
Um, I don't think there's any question that Al Qaeda and ISIS are the two most significant terrorist organizations in the world. Um, do they have the same capability and reach and capacity that they had 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Uh, probably not. They have uh, leadership issues. Uh, more countries have more capability also to uh, help us uh, deal with these terrorist organizations. Um, our capabilities, our intelligence, where it all starts, uh, has gotten better. Uh, our drones, our sophisticated weaponry, um, uh, our satellites have all gotten better. Theirs have not. So it's they're still a threat, but uh, I don't think as significant a threat as they have been. All right. Secretary Chuck Hagel, thank you so much. Thank you.